what is wrong with us and why it matters and this is part two <laughs> and this is what we will focus on why does this matter to know what is wrong with us what has all of this to do with our relationships our marriages <laughs> you see too often we have rather naive ideas about who we are and how we are going about our relationships and how everyone is going to live happily ever after <laughs> especially in the beginning of our relationships we are often naive and overly positive about what drives us about the extent of our self-control and about what we are capable of in certain trying or tempting circumstances or if we are facing certain borderline situations and what the other person may be capable of. Our relationships, marriage, love, romance, affection, <laughs> those are beautiful things, delightful experiences. They lift up our lives. Those are wonderful times. They usually bring out the best from us. So yes, give us more of that. <laughs> and while that lasts, we usually get to enjoy the best of what the other person is capable of. And that is what we perceive, the best in the other. We open up ourselves, ourselves to them, we trust them, we let them in, and that is all great. But our honeymoon period doesn't last forever. We need to be clear about what to expect after and what we need to guard against. And first of all <laughs> is our own fallen nature and the fallen nature of our beloved ones. Facing this reality heads on, we have much better chances to preserve and nourish what, what is so good about our relationships. And here we will briefly reflect on a few of the ways our sinful condition, remember condition, we are talking about our condition, how it may manifest itself in our relationships. And this is this by no means a comprehensive list. We will look at, at five, five problems, five. But hopefully it will give you a heads up. Why do we need to be aware of our sinful condition in our relationships? Problem number one, <laughs> because of our unreliable emotions. Remember, in the last session, we reflected on how unreliable and to great extent uncontrollable our emotions are. And the same was true about our thoughts and desires. They can just randomly pop up and, and push us off the balance. When people are asked what will keep their marriage going, what will hold them together till the end of their days, <laughs> What do people usually say? Can you guess? <laughs> what would you say? Often the answer is our love, our affection. <laughs> but what are they? They are emotions. And we are not exactly in control over them. What if one day you wake up and, and the warm and affectionate feeling is gone? Can you see? We need something much more solid and permanent to build our relationships on if we want them to last. And the good news is <laughs> we teach exactly what it is in session 12 in the Wisdom for Relationships course. So go and find it out. Why do we need to be aware of our sinful condition in our relationships? Problem number two, <laughs> because of our selfishness. And this is almost the key manifestation of our sinful condition. We are turned and curved towards ourselves. We care about ourselves the most. <laughs> By our fallen nature, we want everything to be about, about me, for me, in my interests, for my benefit. And this is a very hard spell to break. 
and we won't be able to fully break it in this age. But what does this mean? What does this may mean for our relationships, for our marriages? It means that we may look at our marriage and, and marital relationships and the other person as someone who is there for me, to make me happy, to satisfy my desires, etc. That is not going to work. Not in a long term. Not in any satisfactory manner. And again, we need some wiser perspective on what our relationships are about. We need to understand how to think about our marriage so that it would actually work well and deliver for us what we long for, what we hope for. The good news is, <laughs> this is what we teach in session 11 <laughs> in the Wisdom for Relationships course and then also in sessions 19 and 20 and elsewhere how to counter this selfish bend and how to make these relationships, our marriages, work really well. Go and find it out. Why do we need to be aware of our sinful condition in our relationships? Problem number three. <laughs> because of our lack of wisdom. Sadly, but we are born lacking wisdom, lacking understanding. We grow up and often are doomed to spend our lives not knowing God's good and wise design for our lives. We don't even know who we truly are. <laughs> so we don't know what God's good and wise design for our relationships is. We don't know how to think about them and how to prepare for them and how to live in them. And sometimes, lifetime just goes by and, and we remain in our ignorance. And how can we hope to succeed in our relationships if we lack this understanding? The good news is, <laughs> the whole course, Wisdom for Relationships, is about... Yes, about giving you all the wisdom needed. And if you, by God's grace, Take it in. Blessed you are, for that will give you a very good foundation. Why do we need to be aware of our sinful condition in our relationships? Problem number four. <laughs> because of ignorance. Ignorance about God. Yes, because of our natural condition we do not know the true God. We do not know who He is, what He is like, what His attitude towards us is, and what He graciously and generously desires to provide for us. Fine, fine, you may say, but, say, but what, what has this to do with our relationships, with our marriages? Why would this matter? This is a big one. <laughs> this one actually matters hugely. The topic is too deep and too significant. We are not able to cover it here. You can find much more, much more in the Wisdom for Your Life course. Just go, go there, go through it. But to give you a hint, there are a few things that have the greatest impact on our lives. Those are immaterial things, such as how we understand who we are, our worth, our significance, what gives meaning to our lives, where do we find peace and, and hope, thinking about our future, and so on. And the thing is, we all need this. We all chase them. And if we do not receive these immaterial things as gifts, as free gifts of our God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we will be mistakenly searching for them elsewhere. It may be in our relationships. And this is where the risk comes in. If we expect our relationships from our spouse, what only true God can give us, then we will be disappointed 
when we do not find it there. And the good news is <laughs> that you can learn about this much more in the Wisdom for Relationships course session, How God Protects Our Marriage. And then you will have a clear understanding of what to expect and what not. Go for it. Find it. Why do we need to be aware of our sinful condition in our relationships? Problem number five. Conflicts, hurt and pain. All that we discussed earlier and many other manifestations of our innate sinful nature will inevitably lead to conflicts and hurt and pain and broken relationships. We will act foolishly. We will make mistakes. We will hurt our closest people. We will fail them. We will let them down. And so on. We all do this. We all do this. And therefore, we desperately need a mechanism for how to restore what is broken. How to fix it. Something that would help us to reconcile to find peace and harmony in our relationships again and again and again. And yes, <laughs> the good news for you is that you can learn about it in the Wisdom for Relationships course, session 25. 25, where we learn about the gift of forgiveness, about forgiveness as a superpower and about a few other superpowers as well. All of them for you. You will need them. We all need them. And they are available for you. Fear not. Be at peace. <laughs> God the Father has made his provisions for you. Okay. This should serve as a heads up calling. To be realistic. To be wise. To be prepared. To be equipped. To be ready to stand and work for your future happiness. And there will be plenty of very practical wisdom for that.